What about oxytocin? So one of the functions of oxytocin is actually contraction, and it is contraction of the uterus, and this is not a well-known function of oxytocin. And simply what oxytocin is doing, it is to cause the contraction of the uterus during labor, especially the last stage of uh, labor. And usually uh, the evidence is due to the fact that you have higher levels, very high levels of oxytocin during labor, especially during the last stage of labor. But also if you remove uh, the pituitary, if you remove the pituitary, meaning that there's no uh, release of oxytocin, usually animals get prolonged labor because you remove the contraction that is brought about by oxytocin. So this is the evidence uh, for the function of oxytocin when it comes to contraction of the uterus. And contraction of the uterus is necessary uh, to expulse, you know, for the expulsion of the fetus during parturition. When women are giving birth, the fetus has to be removed or has to find its way from the uterus. And the uterus has to contract to squeeze the fetus outside the uterus. So the function of oxytocin is to contract, to squeeze that uterus so that the fetus uh, will get out of the uterus. This is a normal process. But the most famous or popular function of oxytocin is what we call milk ejection. And you should differentiate it with milk production, which is the function of prolactin. And prolactin is an anterior pituitary hormone. So this is milk ejection, basically squeezing out the milk. This is what we call milk ejection. So with milk ejection, the process starts with suckling reflex. And this happened when the baby is suckling, you know, stimulation of the nipples, the suckling reflex, the message is sent to the hypothalamic nuclei, and oxytocin is synthesized, travel down to the posterior pituitary, get released into the blood circulation, all the way to the breast, within the alveoli of the breast that have the milk, it will cause the contraction of this alveoli or the squeezing of this alveoli, and then milk will find its way outside through the duct you know to the nipple and the baby can actually access that milk so this whole process which brings about milk ejection all process from suckling reflex message being sent to the hypothalamic nuclei you know release of oxytocin by the posterior pituitary squeezing of the alveoli ejection of milk is what is known as milk letdown you should know this very well and this is the biological function of oxytocin so now let's take a look at the control regulation of these hormones adh and oxytocin how is adh uh, regulated if you inject concentrated solution into a blood vessel that goes to the hypothalamus that means the supraoptic and paraventricular uh, nuclei, immediately large quantities of ADH will be produced. What is happening is the fact that you have injected hyper or smaller solution in the extracellular fluid, that means fluid will move from the cells that produce these uh, hormones to the extracellular fluid by osmosis. You know that osmosis is movement of fluid from low concentration to high concentration. So actually the cells, the uh, paraventricular and supraoptic um, cells, will be, um, the fluid will move from these cells. And in so doing, these cells will shrink because they don't have enough uh, fluid, so they will shrink. So the shrinkage of these cells is a stimulus for the synthesis of ADH. So a lot of ADH will be synthesized and it will travel along the axoplasm, down to the posterior pituitary, released uh, posterior pituitary, released into the circulation, all the way um, to the kidney to cause reabsorption of water. So for this reason, the supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei, or the cells, have acted as osmoreceptors because they have been stimulated by changes in osmo, uh, osmolarity. Because a lot of fluid has moved from these cells and these cells shrinked and when they shrink this is this is a stimulus that produces more adh adh is produced 
and it will get down um, to the nephrons and as we have already said adenyl cyclase cyclic AMP second messenger system will be stimulated and this will cause phosphorylation of aquaporins which are the proteins which makes up the vesicles that are located within the membranes of the cells that makes up the collecting duct as well as the distal convoluted tubule and a lot of water will be drawn from the nephron back to the extracellular fluid and in so doing you regulate the osmolarity so this whole process is called osmotic regulation because changes in hormone levels production and synthesis is due to the fact that there was changes in osmolarity within the extracellular fluid but we also know the fact that changes in blood volume for example changes changes in extracellular fluid volume can also stimulate production of adh as we said we do have volume and pressure receptors and we know a lot of these are present in right atria and these are known as stretch receptors and they are usually stimulated where, where, where when the blood level is normal or high but when the blood volume is very low they are not stimulated and if they are not stimulated they are not inhibiting the synthesis and production and release of ADH which we call it vasopressing because of this effect when the blood volume is very low there's no inhibition so a lot of vasopressin will be produced travel down to the vessels cause vasoconstriction and in so doing increase the blood pressure meaning that it restores the blood pressure so the blood pressure is brought to normal because when you have changes in blood volume when the blood volume is low the blood pressure is also low which is not good it has to be returned back to normal and in one way of doing that is actually to constrict the blood vessels so the blood pressure become high and this is the function of vasopressin which is also known as antidiuretic hormone so we also know that we have baroreceptors within the aortic pulmonary and carotid vessels and they also do the same so changes in pressures you know can actually stimulate this because they when, when the pressure is normal when it is high they are stimulated and they also inhibit uh, synthesis production and release of ADH but when the blood volume is very low the pressure is low they are not stimulated so the inhibition is not there so there's production of ADH that is what is happening so this part is called volume regulation or pressure regulation so the control of ADH depends on two types of regulation you have osmotic regulation and you do have volume regulation this is how um, ADH is being regulated for oxytocin it is the same we talked about the suckling reflex starting the sequence of event that at the end of the day control the amount of or the level of uh, oxytocin so we have the process of milk letdown the whole thing that is happening there and also we will discuss um, some of other effects or some of other factors when we discuss labor or paturation.